But graphite has made its name literally with a wonderful ability to leave a mark. At General Pencil Company's factory in Jersey City, New Jersey, a dedicated group of pencil makers turn graphite powder and blocks of cedar into the world's most reliable writing instrument. We are still the oldest pencil manufacturer in the USA, still family owned and operated by the original founding family. And we're still in this brick building 100 years later. Making a pencil begins with a mixture of graphite, carbon powder derived from coal, and a smaller amount of clay. Increasing the percentage of graphite makes for a softer, darker mark, while more clay makes a harder, lighter mark. A 750-pound mix of graphite, carbon, clay, and water are fed into this ball mill filled with river stones. The ball mill churns the ingredients for 24 hours until they form a smooth, homogeneous slurry. General Pencil pumps the slurry through filter presses, which screen out the water and form the mix into manageable sections, known as cakes. The cakes are left to dry for 48 hours. We want to dry it real slow so that the dry evenly in the outer surface doesn't crust. If it should crust, that's going to be a scratchy spot in our lead later. Pencil makers and the general public still use the term lead to describe the pencil's graphite writing core, even though pencils have never contained lead. The misnomer comes from the fact that ancient Romans, Greeks, and Egyptians wrote with a tool called a stylus, pencilis in Latin, which was often made of lead. The modern day pencil traces its origins to the discovery of graphite in 1564. But perfecting the pencil took three centuries of innovations, many of which are still used by General Pencil. After the carbon cakes are pulverized to a very fine powder and recombined with water, the mixture is ready to be extruded into the pencil-shaped cores, or leads. He's packing it in our packing ram and what he's having to do is get all of the air out of there, just like you would make a clay figure in school. If you have air in it, it's going to explode when we go to fire these. OK, John's loaded up our cylinder. And now for the first time, the actual mix itself is going to take on the shape of a pencil lead. The lead is going to come out of the die here and pass through our cutter wheel. And as the lead comes through, these blades will cut it to length, and that die is what's actually going to give us the shape of the pencil lead itself. Once the pencil cores are extruded out and dried, they're placed into the crucibles which we're actually going to put into our furnace. On top of the crucible, we pour a packing graphite to make sure that the oxygen doesn't get down to leads, the cores themselves, to burn out that carbon. While the 1800 degree furnace stiffens the leads, over in the woodworking area, the pencil shell begins to take shape. First, a saw cuts eight grooves into each slat of cedar. We use the cedar because of its straight grain, and cedar allows for smooth sharpening as well. And of course, everybody loves the smell of a freshly sharpened cedar pencil. The graphite cores are glued into one slat and covered with another, forming a sandwich. Once dried, the slats are cut into round or hexagonal pencils. And we make a hex pencil and a round pencil. Traditionally, a hex pencil was made so simply it would not roll off the desk of a child. The pencils are then sanded and painted, fitted with a brass eraser holder, called a ferrule, in case you were wondering, and the erasers themselves. They're also stamped with letters or numbers that indicate the pencil's degree of hardness versus blackness, the HB scale. With one being the softest, two being soft and leaving a nice dark mark, and three being slightly harder, and four being extra hard. 
The number two pencil also happens to leave a mark that's easily read by optical scanners. That's why beginning in the 1960s, every student has had to bring a pair to take a standardized test. The number two is but one point along a wide scale of pencil options. To get a fine light mark, an engineer might use the number 5H. An artist seeking bold black lines would reach for an 8B. One of the benefits that a pencil has over a pen is just by the pressure of your hand, you can change the texture, the darkness, the lightness, the tone, the imprint, where a pen just isn't going to be able to do that for you. Graphite works by leaving itself behind.